Welcome to the vlog. Welcome to No Boring Days. I posted a video about doing the Maffetone method and a few people have commented and have been asking for an update. So here's my Maffetone method update after one year. Well, almost one year. First of all, let's get this out of the way. What is the Maffetone method? The Maffetone method is a protocol that I like to use when I exercise, specifically when I bike, which is whenever I'm out on an exercise, whenever I'm biking, I make sure that my heart rate is 180 beats minus my age. I'm about 37 years old, so I'm supposed to be running at 143 beats per minute. Heart rate, generally I just keep it at 145 beats per minute. I try to stay below 145 beats per minute heart rate. If you want to learn more about it, I'll put a link in the show notes about the Maffetone method. So when did I start the Maffetone method? I started in August 2020. So in that span of time, what have I been doing? Generally speaking, most of my rides are at, when I say most of my rides, about 90% of my rides are at my Maffetone heart rate. I try to keep it around 145 beats per minute. In the 10% of my rides, I'm usually doing a very hard effort, whether it's really hard up a hill or a really long hard effort, maybe at threshold or something like that. And Later on in the video, I will get into more detail as to the, those types of riding because uh, I think what most people want to know is have I gotten faster? Have I become a faster cyclist doing this protocol or doing this method? So we'll get into that. And also, one of the benefits of the Maffetone method is that I've found that I've been able to spend a lot more time on the bike. The nice thing with Strava is I've been able to keep a good log of all my rides for two years now, I think. And I'm, I didn't look at the early 2020 months because that was COVID and there was a lot of time just spent indoors. So I was cycling quite a bit, but doing the indoor trainer and I was doing a lot of intervals. So there was not a lot of uh, long days on the saddle. But basically, in 2019, I averaged 34.1 hours a month of cycling but on August 2020 that's when I started the Maffetone method till May 2021 I've been averaging 47.9 hours of cycling now that's what I think is one of the benefits of doing the Maffetone method because since I started doing the Maffetone method I don't usually wake up the next day tired or exhausted. I don't need that much time to recover because I'm not I'm not going full gas all the time anymore. So before after a hard ride I would get headaches and in fact I would feel fatigued the next day. Now more often than not I feel pretty good. So I get to go out on rides most days. So let's answer that question. Do I am I a faster cyclist? Do I ride bikes faster than before? Now, I'd like to think so. It feels faster. I can show you numbers that I was not able to do before. I don't have a power meter, but just in general like personal bests or efforts that I definitely was not able to do before. But caveat, I am not the fastest cyclist in the world, obviously. I am a hobbyist. So let's answer the question, am I faster? I'd like to show you a ride that I did. It's a 140 kilometer ride. I did it in five hours, 47 minutes, and two seconds moving time with an elapsed time of about seven hours. And I managed to average 24.4 kilometers per hour with an average heart rate of 139 beats per minute. And you can see here that it was pretty consistent at about 140 to 150 beats per minute throughout the whole ride. And prior to doing the Maffetone method, definitely I was not able to average 24 kilometers per hour for four or five hours at a time. 
So this ride, this 140 kilometer ride, this one was done on December 2020, only a few months of doing the Maffetone method. And I'll show you another ride where I went up a hill as hard as I could. I, was, I called it the felt like crying on the way up. So after doing months of the Maffetone method, this was one of the first hard efforts that I did going up a climb. And I managed, so the climb is called the Mabini climb. I managed to get a personal record of 20 minutes and 50 seconds. It's, it's about 3.39 kilometers, 285 meters elevation gain with a 7.9% average. And I think it has like pitches of like here, 16, 19, 18 percent and I managed to do it in 20 minutes 50 seconds if you look at my my results in that hill prior to that my personal best was 21 minutes and 38 seconds so I was able to beat it by almost a minute and another hard effort up a hill is this effort on March 19, 2021 called it Hard Up Pulang Bato to Kuba. Actually, we made a video about this with my friends. We basically raced up uh, this climb called Kuba. This is the climb. I man It's a 7.54 kilometer climb, 375 meters of elevation gain with a 4.9% average. If this is a much mellower climb than the Mabini climb, not many very steep sections there are some sections that are steep but very short and I managed to do this climb in 29 minutes and 26 seconds prior to that climb my personal best was 32 minutes and 15 so I beat my personal best by almost I don't know I'm bad at math two minutes plus so I think I've done this climb 25 times if I'm reading this correctly but you can see that start of 2020 I slowed down a little bit, started doing the Maffetone method, so my time went a little bit lower. So here, October 2020 was 39 minutes, 38 minutes, 39 minutes. While if you compare it to my 2019 times, here's 32, 33, so significantly faster. You could see that it was slower while doing the Maffetone method. So these were Maffetone method efforts while this one my PR was an all-out as hard as I could go effort and I beat it at 29 minutes 26 seconds so you could see that the speed that I could maintain over a long period of time in my 140 kilometer ride that one went up my ability to just ride for a long period of time went up as well uh, I have a few rides here that I've just gone four hours straight without really stopping and um, you know not feeling that much fatigue afterwards so a, a combination of not stressing out my body that much but also just having a high volume of rides while my top end has improved as well now I'd like to caveat this because I did do a race so this is a race that I joined I have a whole video about this according to the Strava segment it was this is a Lilon XC challenge it was funny because it's an XC challenge but most of the most of the race was actually on badly paved roads which meant that uh, you could you, you could do this race on a gravel bike which I did on this segment it says here that I'm fourth but the reality is this segment is a little bit inaccurate because the finish of this segment is not the actual finish of the actual race. So the people who did the actual race were much faster. I think I was 10 or 20 minutes behind the person who won it on my age category, if I'm not mistaken. But what I found out in this race was I did not have the top end, like the high the high-end speed so if I went up a hill and tried to keep up with the race leaders and then just did a full max effort like a VO2 max effort I could not hold it as long as the people who were who I was racing with now 
I'm not really a racer. I am a hobbyist going back there. But I think the Maffetone method uh, benefits people who are doing much longer races. Let's say four, five, six hours. I'm curious. I've never done it because there are not many races here yet, especially at that uh, at that length where it's four, five, or six hours. But I suspect I would do better in those types of events or races. I don't know, but we'll see. But I think that is one of the problems with not problems, but one of the disadvantages of just doing purely Maffetone method. You do not have that much of a high-end uh, engine but as you can see based on my PRs going up Mabini and Guba my high-end my VO2 max still is better than before so in fact I think if I did more concentrated efforts so let's say five minute or ten minute efforts I suspect that I would do much better in terms of my max speed or high end speed or VO2 max. One other ride I, I wanted to show you was this ride was fairly recently. I did it on May 8, 2021, and it's a 97.87 kilometer ride that I finished in 3 hours, 12 minutes, and 47 seconds. Really, the elapsed time, as you could see, was 3 hours, 14 minutes, and 35 seconds. So I had like 2 minutes of break somewhere there. Probably got stuck in traffic. And you can see that I had an average speed of 30.5 kilometers per hour with a heart rate of 157 beats per minute. Now, this is the fastest ride of my life. There's definitely no way I would have been able to do this ride um, before doing the Maffetone method. The fun thing with this ride, I don't have any video of this ride. At around at about the 20, about the at about the 10 kilometer mark, there was this group that was going fast, and then I just hitched with them. So I rode with the I rode with them. I was just on their wheel the whole time. So I had the benefit of drafting from them. So that explains some of the speed. That explains the lower effort in terms of heart rate. But I drafted from them all the way to Sogod and just stayed behind their wheel the whole time. And I was able to keep up with them. I was able to stay on their wheel and definitely I would have not been able to do that had I not been doing the Maffetone method. And then on the way back, I was fortunate enough to catch this one guy who was super fast. He was going faster than the group that I was hitching with. This guy was by himself. He was on his small ring the whole time, his small front ring. So he wasn't actually doing his full effort, I suspect. I don't know why he was at the small ring the whole time. Maybe he was trying to manage his effort, but he was, he was going super fast. I was barely able to hang on to him on the whole ride back. And then eventually, we got caught in some traffic and he got caught behind a jeepney. And then when he got caught behind a jeepney, I, I had no choice but to overtake him. I kind of did not want to overtake him. So I overtook him and then he over then he slipped behind me and overtook me and basically just sprinted. And there was no way I was catching him again. But in the end, when I got home, I managed to average 30 kilometers per hour over this long stretch. And that is something that I would never have been able to do prior to the Maffetone method. Uh, fastest ride of my life so far. So that's it. I definitely see an improvement in terms of my fitness. Uh, I've been a I'm able to go faster at a lower heart rate. That is for sure. My top end speed or my top end effort has improved as well. It's just that I feel like if I had more targeted training in terms of my top end effort, like maybe doing 5 minute, 10 minute, 20 minute efforts on a consistent basis, I think it would get better. But I'm not really racing, I'm just doing this for fun. And I think my goal is to be able to wake up every day 
with the intent and motivation to bike and the Maffetone method allows me to do that so I'm still gonna continue my protocol of mostly Maffetone 90% of the time and the occasional 10% of going hard I mean let's be honest going hard is fun going hard up a hill is fun trying to go as fast as you can is fun and doing the Maffetone method does not mean that I want to stop doing that it just means that I'm choosing those efforts more wisely instead of just going through every ride as hard as I can all right I hope that was a good update I hope that gives you some insight as to what one year almost one year of doing the Maffetone method can do in terms of fitness uh, if you've been doing the Maffetone method for a while now I'd like to hear from you how have you been doing how's it going what do you feel are you faster or are you just enjoying cycling more than normal let me know put it in the comments okay no boring days please subscribe <laughs>